Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2 Episode 1 Strange Energies. <laughs> this video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Star Trek Lower Decks uh, and um, yeah so this week I'm covering the latest episode of Season 2 premiere. So I've been waiting a really long time for this show. I've been, this is probably my favorite of the uh, newer Star Trek shows that have aired thus far and so it was the one I was most excited to see return even more so than Picard. Um, and so I feel like maybe I have ramped up my expectations too high because I allowed myself to get caught up in the hype of every all the people attached to the show saying, oh, this season's going to be even the better than the last one's going to be the best season ever. We take the show in new directions. And people always say that <laughs> about every new season of a show. And, um... I think I had my expectations too high because I was expecting more from this than um, probably what was realistic. And so I was a little disappointed because this was basically this episode was more of the same. However, that being said, I like more of the same <laughs> because I really liked season one of Lower Decks, particularly towards the end. However... I think this is more reminiscent of some of the more, like, moderate, like, the oh, the good episodes, but not the great ones of season one. It didn't really feel like they were taking it in a different direction. It felt like pretty much the same sort of thing that they would do in season one, which is fine. You know, as I said, that's just people attached to this show blowing smoke up everyone's ass to try to get them to watch it. But maybe... Maybe the show will become uh, newer and different uh, and, la and later in the season. Uh, but that's not to say I didn't like this episode. I, in fact, liked this episode a lot, as I said. Um, I did like more of the same. <laughs> and um, But the thing about this episode is, like, what I liked about it is the humor. Like, I think this is a really funny episode, and it's one of the funniest, uh, one of the funnier, not the funniest, but one of the funnier episodes uh, of the show, and that's a great way to start the season. But plot-wise, it didn't really do it for me. Like, if I look at what the episode was actually about, it's kind of, like, underneath, it's about... Um, Manner's relationship with their mother and how they're coming to terms with having their mother, the fact that their mother and daughter are out in the open and how that's affecting things. And at first, you know, it allowed, uh, Captain Freeman was allowing Mariner to do whatever she wanted to do, which was putting a strain on her relationship with her first officer. And, uh, so, um... And then uh, Mariner was trying to come to terms with, uh, you know, being friends with her mother again, but uh, having, uh, but basically just walking all over her and how that wasn't a healthy relationship. Um, and I feel like, I do think it's funny that they, they went to such extreme, absurd situations to explore that relationship. I think that's kind of what the show does best is kind of mocks. Uh, the, some of the absurd stuff that happens in Star Trek, and this one particularly was poking fun at the original series, um, which is which is the most absurd of them all. It could be the most absurd. But I feel like, I don't know, I wasn't really on board with the character story. Like I feel like they could have done that that part of it better and also more to the point the thing I, I would think that disappoint me the most about this episode is the uh, side plot because they're, they're falling back to the same format and this is a format that I was getting really tired of in season one where there'd be an A plot with Mariner usually Boimler but of course not in this episode but uh, and then the B plot with Tindy and Rutherford and I I prefer I like the episodes the most in season one where they they um, shafted that format where they ditched it because it seems like they were falling back on it too much and they fall back on it yet again in this episode. And I didn't really like the side plot with, with Tendi and Rutherford. Uh, if I'm, and I didn't even find it all that funny. 
Uh, it's just, I don't know. I think when they take Tindy's character and make her, like, absurd to the extreme to the point where she's, like, trying to kill Rutherford and rips his brains out simply because she's afraid of losing him as a friend. Like, I know that it's supposed to be, f that's the humor in it, that she would go to ab absurd uh, extremes to keep him as a friend, uh, but... I don't know, I didn't think, it, it, that didn't work for me. And I know that they're building towards a, a you know, romance between these two because uh, she obviously started to get really jealous when the, uh, he started dating that Trill again. Um, and so I wasn't, I don't know, I'm just not a huge fan of that storyline. I'm not really shipping these two characters. I'm not a huge fan of them getting together. Uh, I do like Tindy as a character. I do think I like how she's really like, oh, bright and optimism. But I don't like when they use her in this way where she does, like when she built the dog. <laughs> and here where she's like, you know, going around with like this medical machine gun trying to shoot <laughs> Rutherford. I mean, it is it was a bit funny, but it's, I don't know. I, I didn't think it was the worst thing ever, but I wasn't really on board with it. And, of course, I feel like the humor of when they were having that, you know, Rutherford and Tendi were having that tender revelation at the end of the episode while a giant space head was outside the ship. I feel like that's the kind of thing that the show has already done a whole lot. I mean, it's still funny, but <laughs> what people have, and that's actually what they did in the first episode, where people were having, like, conversations about their personal relationship while the weirdest, craziest shit is going around them, and they're just ignoring, <laughs> they're just oblivious to it. And I, I, it does feel like they're, I don't know, just something about that makes me feel like this, this episode is falling back on its tropes and falling back on what it's done before rather than trying to push the show in a new direction. I mean, it's still funny, but, but, uh, it's kind of like, yeah, it's like hearing, it's like the, the same joke that you've heard a couple times already. It's still a funny joke, but it's, it starts to diminish, uh, it's, um, hold on you, it's freshness or take or whatever, because we have seen that. I mean, I liked it better in the first episode when um, Rutherford and was with the Trill woman and they were, like, talking about the dating or whatever while zombies were on them trying to kill kill them. Like, because it was it was fresh, it was new to me. Now they're just, it's kind of just like a reiteration of that. But anyway, not that it's the first time I've ever seen that type of humor, but <laughs> I'm just specifically to the show, it's done it before. Anywho, I did think this is a really funny episode, though. I, I, got, I have to admit that um, it's um, I love the opening with Mariner in the holodeck with the Kardashians. Because when they showed her at first with the Kardashians, before I realized it was a holodeck, I was like, you know, the nerdy uh, continuity hog brain was going off, I was like, wait a second, this show takes place after Nemesis, Nemesis takes place after Deep Space Nine, and after Deep Space Nine, the Cardassian Union, or Cardassian Empire, is in ruins, it was completely destroyed by the Dominion War, they shouldn't be a superpower, they shouldn't have, like, all these ships, and why they, they're supposed to be completely different, they shouldn't be, like, torturing Mariner, and then, of course, they reveal it's a holodeck, and I was like, oh, okay, there you go, you satisfied, so I'll give the show credit, because at first I was like, oh, shut up, nerdy brain. It's just a comedy show. Just go with it. But then they actually satisfied the nerdy brain. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. We'll give you an explanation. It's actually a hol uh, holodeck program. It's not in real life. So they could do a holodeck program of any, you know, Kardashians before the Empire fell. So um, give the show credit for that. It satisfied even the nerdy part of my brain. Um... And it was a really funny sequence, and it was a fun sequence. I absolutely loved it. Uh, of course, they were poking a lot of fun <laughs> at the Chain of Command episode. Like, the type of interrogation room was the exact replica of the one from Chain of Command. They even had the four lights up there. And I love the joke when uh, they have Boyne lawyers hanging. It's like, they keep showing me lights! <laughs> I really cracked up at that one. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. And then, but again, 
And so, as much as I loved the sequence, that was hilarious. It, again, it felt kind of a retread of what they did in the previous season, because she is again using the holodeck for therapy, just like she did in the episode Crisis Point, which I think was my favorite episode of the season, where they were making fun of the movies. Uh, and I thought they kind of did that better there, but maybe they were just reiterating that she's continuing to use the holodeck for therapy, which is fine. Uh, hopefully they'll make a, uh, a storyline out of this. Um, but again, it, it was kind of like something they've done before. Uh, and then we, <laughs> we get to the planet where, um... Ransom turns into a godlike being, and this is hilarious as well. Uh, they were poking fun at, of course, the second original series pilot where No Man Has Gone Before, and they even referenced that with Gary Mitchell to make it very clear that's that's what they're doing. But it's really, I, I love the obtuseness of it, the way it's like, uh, um, there just happens to be these weird energy emitters, and they just call it, flat out, call it strange energy. <laughs> oh, this is strange energy, it could turn you into a god like creature and i love how like ransom's normal but as soon as they mention that and had that dial said line of dialogue his eyes start going like oh, i'm all powerful like that was <laughs> hilarious it was really effective humor but my favorite part my f the funniest joke of this episode that, that really had me laughing uh, a lot um was when ransom turned like his whole head like grew and turned to into a giant head and flew into space and then on the Cerritos like the helmsman just very nonchalantly was like Captain there's a giant head approaching us <laughs> like I don't know why but I thought that was the funniest thing ever just to, like the nonchalant manner of it. it was obviously making fun of the original series like when I don't, I can't, I don't know. was there ever a time in the real, original series where a giant head was flying in the ship I know they found a giant link in, in space and there was a giant hand that grabbed them in the Apollo episode um, but uh, yeah, maybe there was. I'm pretty sure there was a giant head at some <laughs> stage. And then later, when in that sequence, when you know he grew hands and started grabbing, that same helmsman was like, "Oh, Captain, we're being grabbed." <laughs> like I don't know. Something about that I thought was absolutely hilarious. And of course, it was making fun of the the absurdness of the original series. Um, that being said, I do I do prefer when the show focuses more on like next generation era because the, the original series era that's too much of an easy target <laughs> because it was like too absurd and then the show gets like too crazy and off the off the wall when they when they do stuff like that but um I, I don't know I still thought it was I thought it was funny as hell uh, still and I do like that ending sequence too like. As much as I, I didn't really think the character story worked all that well, it was kind of too by the numbers for me. I did like how they resolved it with Mariner and her mother in the, in the ready room where they're like, oh, we're, we're, we know not to do this. I'm not going to let you do whatever you want. Now I'll listen to you. And they hug each other. And then she's like, okay, well, then there's security officers outside. And she's like, oh, they're going to take me to the brig. Oh, I love you. <laughs> and then she's like, stop disobeying my orders. Like, don't tell me what to do. I'll do what I want. And then dragging her away. Like, that That was cool. <laughs> I, do, I do like how they portray the relationship and I think it could go in, in um, interesting um, directions from here um, and I also like what they did, had that sequence with Boimler on the, on the Titan I mean it was obvious though I mean it was beyond obvious when Tendi's like oh I'm sure he's having the time of his life it's obvious that they were going to flash to him freaking out of course I've seen this in the trailers as well that you know helps how I knew it but it was beyond that that's like the typical joke oh he's having such a great time and they've cut to having a horrible time <laughs> but of course this is obviously going to be the out for why Boimler returns to the Cerritos because he's just going to be sick of his life constantly being in danger and it's gonna but 
I think that's good. Like, I'm looking forward to that storyline, and I think that was a really funny ending, too, that just showed how crazy, the crazy shit the Titan was getting up to, because it's a more to a frontline ship than the Cerritos, which is kind of a, you know, a throwaway, who cares about ship, and, and I love how they're just fighting, you know, all these random ships, and they go through this wormhole, and they turn into putty. Like, that, that was funny. So I did really like that ending. Uh, so my rating uh, for Strange Energy is, I don't know, I'm close to giving it an 8 because it was so funny. Um, but I think I'll give it a 7. Uh, simply because it did rely too much on jokes and storylines that they did in Season 1. Where I was expecting Season 2 to be fresh and different. But maybe it will get fresh and different from here. But either way, it was still a good episode. Uh, because it was still hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and I love some of the jokes particularly. And they keep showing me lights. Like, I don't know. The, 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 the show, I have to give the show a lot of credit for being able to just fire out all these really hilarious jokes that, that pay off more for Star Trek fans because they make all these Star Trek references. So I still love the show. It's still my favorite of the newer Star Trek shows. And I hope season two only gets better from here. So anyway, uh, that is it for my review of uh, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2 Episode 1. Be sure to check out my channel each and every week as I cover, continue to cover Star Trek Lower Decks. Next week I will be having a special guest on my video because I am flying out to visit my sister. So uh, we will record our review of uh, Episode 2 together. And so you can check that out here. Um, yeah. So be sure to check it, check me out every week for my coverage of Lower Decks, as well as I cover many other Star Trek shows, as well as other shows such as Better Call Saul, Star Wars, Clone Wars, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all that. And thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>